بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدانا الله Today inshallah we're going to continue the uh, tafsir and explanations of uh, Surah Al-Mulk from Ayah 6 to Ayah 12 أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Last time we spoke about uh, Surah Al-Mulk and the virtue of this surah and how it's very important to read or to recite this uh, surah every night uh, as it will protect you from the punishment of the grave as been uh, mentioned in the Sahih, uh, the Hadith Sahih for the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam uh, Surah Al-Mulk, he, he, he called it alayhi salatu was salam Al-Munajjiyya, Al-Munajjiyya or the Saver it saves you from the, uh, the calamities and from the uh, punishment, as we mentioned in the grave. Um, we mentioned Al-Mulk last time is a kingdom and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the dominion and the kingdom belongs to Allah uh, and uh, it's all under his control. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us an example of certain creatures in this um, universe like the death and life being created by Allah, uh, like the seven heavens that, uh, which contains these beautiful uh, glistening stars and planets, and how it is all from the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And at the same time, the stars, the glistening stars is uh, um, like, um, Throwing with, uh, uh, yeah, throwing the shayateen with something like missiles that thrown to the devils who try to listen to their news in the uh, near sky, and this has happened uh, as we mentioned that after the uh, the the Prophet Muhammad Sallam being born, because. Uh, before the devils, uh, they uh, have the ability to listen to some some of the future events that may happen to the mankind, and they take it to the uh, to the uh, sooth, uh, soothsayers and those people in order to uh, get, tell it to the people. But not, but after um, Prophet Muhammad born, this was not anymore the clo the the sky being shut for all such. Uh, shayateen and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made these stars from its job not only for decoration of the sky but also for throwing such shayateen or satans with these uh, missiles of um, fire and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned at the end of ayah 5 وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ Allah prepared for those devils the punishment of the blaze and uh, the word blaze or asair mentioned as a punishment for the shayateen or for the devils. It's mentioned also again in another surah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that those uh, who will not, uh, who will disobey Allah from the, uh, them uh, when he was talking about Prophet Sulaiman that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made them under his power and his control from the shayateen. And those who are not obeying will have the punishment of the sa'ir or the blaze. And remember we mentioned the blaze is um, could be, and Allah knows best, a specific type of hellfire, especially for the, for the shayateen or for the devils, because they are already created from fire. So if they're going to be punished with something, uh, it should be painful for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a, for them a painful punishment, which is the blaze. Why I'm saying that? Because now in ayah 6, Allah is mentioning to the disbelievers, there will be their uh, own or their specific punishment. 
وللذين كفروا بربهم those who disbelieved in their Lord عذاب جهنم the punishment of hell وبئس المصير and wretched is the destination so here عذاب جهنم so جهنم is the hell fire and its punishment will be different from the punishment of the blaze or a sair. So Allah is telling us that the shayateen has a specific type of punishment, which is a punishment of the blaze, while the disbelievers who are from the mankind will have the punishment of Jahannam or the hellfire. And uh, bi'sa means wretched. And it is um, a verb in Arabic, which means that it is something yani, bad will happen to them. Or uh, Al-Masir is the final destination. Their final destination will be the Jahannam al Then the ayat 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, now in ayah 6 and 7, uh, 5 and 6, Allah is telling us that there will be punishment for both the shayateen and disbelievers. Starting from ayah 7, Allah will describe us what this hellfire for the disbelievers looks like. As if now we are in the day of judgment and we are having the scene, just to imagine the scene, how it will be difficult. Allah is uh, describing here the scene in Ayah 7 about the disbelievers. When they are thrown into it, when they are thrown, which giving you the, the, uh, the image is that they will be pushed. They will be pushed strongly and hardly to the hellfire. إذا ألقوا فيها if, when they are thrown into it سمعوا سمعوا means they will hear what they will hear سمعوا لها شهيقا شهيقا is the the sound of the inhalation when you take a breath there is a sound so here Allah is describing that the hellfire had a sound of shahiq or inhalation. Wahiya tafur while it boils up. It boils up. Yani you can imagine, for example, which is of course, yani, it's not the real hellfire. Uh, if you can see any volcano, the beginning of eruption of any volcano, you will you uh, you will see uh, the lava is boiling all around and as if the, uh, the fire mm -hmm. is boiling, the fireballs and the lava, well, all these things, it seems to be very hot, very hot, and from the hotness, it's boil, it boils. So Allah is giving you here the, the image of this hellfire, which is, bo which is uh, boiling and very hot, and also it has a sound, which is the shahiq. And in another surah, Surah Al-Anbiya, Allah mentioned about another sound for the nar or for the hellfire is the zafir. Zafir is the, the sound of exhalation or exhalation. So when you are taking a breath now like that, this sound is the inhalation. You are inhaling air now. What about when you are expiring this is expiration. You are exhaling now your air from the, your, your lung. So you can imagine a little bit, of course it's not real, but a little bit how the sound of the, the hellfire will be. As you are now in this uh, image and you are seeing those people, the disbelievers being thrown to the boiling uh, and very hot, fire and at the same time there is a sound <sighs> like that this is the sound of the nar 
Here mentioned the Shahiq, which is the inhalation, and the other surah mentioning in or Surah Al Anbiya, the Zafir, which is the exhalation. And this is the importance of when you are reading the tafsir of the Quran, is to uh, um, associate or the tie, tie the ayat together, not take the ayat as in separate islands. We have to bring the ayat in different surahs together to have a full picture of a certain um, definition or certain image. So Allah now is telling us that in ayah 8, what else happening to this hellfire? Takadu tamayyazu min al This hellfire almost burst, will be burst with rage. Ghayz means rage or anger, severe anger. The ghayz, rage or anger. So, the uh, the hellfire is very angry. So here we, we Allah is mentioning that the hellfire is having exhalation and inhalation, and also it's, it's angry. So as if it is a living, it is a living creature. Allah created the hellfire and is giving you now the character of the hellfire. That she uh, she uh, the hellfire is very angry. And to that degree that it, it almost will be burst out. Why the hellfire is angry and burst out and is boiling and is waiting for the disbelievers? Here, uh, every time, Fawj is a group. Fawj is a group of people or folk of people. Every time, Wherever a group is thrown to it, سألهم خزنتها. What is خزنتها? Anyone knows what is the خزنة? خزنة جهنم. خزنتها. The guardians of the hellfire. They are the. They they are the uh, the the <coughs> the guards. The yes, of the yes. hellfire will be questioning you. They are you. actually angels, by the way. They are angels, yeah. uh, but they are uh, related to the hellfire. They are the guardians and the keepers of the hellfire, but they are actually angels. And do you know the name of the leader? The name of the leader of the angels of the hellfire mentioned in the Quran. Who knows the name? Anyone knows? Their leader. No. Their leader is Malik. Malik. Excellent, Shuvan. Mashallah. May Allah bless you. I wouldn't yes. realize I had my mute on, so I, I kept <laughs> telling them. Okay, Malik. Excellent. So Malik is the leader of the Hellfire Keepers, and his his name is mentioned in the Quran when the disbelievers told him, uh, "Ya Malik, liyqdi alayna Rabbuk." Qala innakum makithun. They wanted to die. The, the, the disbelievers, subhanAllah, from the severity of the punishment, they wish to die. So they ask Malik and telling him, Oh Malik, tell your Lord to uh, make us die. We cannot bear any time anymore the, this punishment. But subhanAllah, here Malik will, resp will respond to them and will say to them, you, are, you, you, you will live forever like that. This is your final destination. There is no death. There is no death. So here, Khazanatuha is that are the keepers of the hellfires and they are angels, as we mentioned. So they will ask those disbelievers and tell them, Alam yatikum nadir, which means, did the, di, didn't you have a warner? Did, didn't you have a warner? No warner came to you. No messengers came to you. So now they will respond in ayah 9. Qalu bala. They said yes. Bala in Arabic is the meaning of yes when the question by negative. What does it mean? If I tell you, didn't you drink your milk in the, uh, in the breakfast or your tea in the breakfast? So you will tell me, yes, I drank my tea. So yes, here in Arabic is Bala. But if I tell you, 
uh, do you brush your tooth during uh, your teeth during the morning uh, or at the morning you will say to me yes also in English but in Arabic it will be naam so naam means yes in Arabic when the question is not having negative uh, negative um, don't yeah, if there is no didn't or don't if there is don't or didn't in the question in Arabic when you say yes you will not say naam you will say bala so here, because the question have negative, alam yatikum, don't didn't you have or didn't you receive any order? So they will say bala, naam, or or, or means yes in English. Yeah. Bala qadija ana nadir. A warner came to us. Here, a warner referred to what nadir? A messenger. Excellent. The messenger. So Nadir is the messenger. The messenger came to us, فَكَذَّبْنَا, فَكَذَّبْنَا we denied. وَقُلْنَا and we said, مَا نَزَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Allah hasn't sent down anything. See, مِنْ شَيْءٍ means anything. They completely deny everything with the messengers. And moreover, they mentioned that Allah didn't reveal anything. In Antum, and not only that, yani they told the messenger that you are liars and Allah didn't send anything. And in antum illa fi dalalim kabir, you are in a great error. In addition, yani they are also yani, um, calling the messengers that came to guide them that they are in a great astray or a great error. Uh, but I don't understand there. If they felt that a warner did indeed come, why did they, they? So they did get the warning, but they rejected it. But they still got the warning. So why do yeah. they think he's an error if they got the warning? I don't understand that. No, the what error is, is they are describing the messengers as themselves. The disbelievers are describing the messengers that they are in a great error. Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. So what they did three things. Yeah. When the messenger came to them, they denied, number one, number two, they mentioned that Allah didn't send down anything. And number three, they accused the messengers of that they are in a great astray or great error. Okay. okay. Then again, they continue in ayat 10. وقالوا, still the disbeliever is saying لو كنا نسمع أو نعقل if only we had been listening or reasoning ما كنا في أصحاب السعير we wouldn't be among the companions of plays here the word نسمع listen أو نعقل now they came to them, uh, the messenger came, the messengers came to them and they listened to the messengers and they should understood what the messengers came with. But what happened? Here the word nasma aw naqil, didn't they listen? They listened, right? They listened and they understood what the messengers came with. But what here stand for Nasma or Naqil? Nasma or Naqil? Sorry? They didn't understand it? It's written in the translation understanding, but they, actually I think it's not uh, an accurate. It's not an accurate They were negligent. They were negligent. Here, Nasma or Naqil, he, they understood yes. already, by the way. And if we are talking about, for example, the disbelievers in Mecca, they understood quite well what messenger Muhammad came with. And they know that he is the all, uh, the true steller and the all honest, and he will not uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, tell them lies. But because of their arrogance, because they know that they will lose no, right. their trade and they will lose their um, uh, control and the slaves they have, they will be um, equal to their slaves. Many other things prevent them from entering Islam. So they couldn't say that, but they know their arrogance from their heart. So if we're going to say understand, it's not understand because you already understood what the messenger came with. Yeah, but they didn't comprehend the result of not understanding properly. 
they understood, they understood the depth, they were but they didn't realize the depth of it, the comprehension of it. Yes, they were ignorant. yes, they excellent. Were, were, uh, so here uh, it is a comprehension, yes, uh, as Shuvon yeah. mentioned, that they didn't realize the consequences. They mm -hmm. didn't realize the consequences of their disbelievers and what they see now in the hill, in the hillfire. You got it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yes. when yes. Yes. here, to listen and to reason means we didn't uh, we didn't appreciate the consequences with the consequences of our disbelieving how it will be like that they thought that they will be uh, just live their life and they will die and there was no resurrection there will no punishment and halas it's it's everything finished but when they I guess it's like when we speak to hmm? sorry when we speak to non-Muslims and say about the fire, they kind of roll their eyes and think, yeah, right. They mm. don't, uh, they hear the message, they understand that that's what we believe, but they don't really comprehend what they're going yeah. to get at the end. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. This is a problem. This is a problem that because of their arrogance, because of their uh, running after their desires, they didn't, they are not fully uh, understanding the full picture they are not fully recognized that after their death, they will be resurrected and will pushed to the hell. This is the missing part. The only part they are saying, they are seeing their life in this dunya. And after that dunya, halas, nothing will happen. So when they resurrected back and see the hellfire in front of them and they thrown to it, so they start to say, لو كنا نسمع أو نعقلو, to comprehend and to obey the messenger will not be that at that time they confess they confess their sins here the word is um, a way of a word of having the anger of Allah on them which giving them a meaning the, the bad things will happen to be, uh, uh, they will be destroyed, to be destroyed to the companion of the Sa'ir, Ashab is Sa'ir. Why they deserve this destruction? Because they confess their uh, sins and admit their sin that they were arrogant. They did, they deny, although they know it was the truth, but because they are running for uh, after their desires because of their benefit <coughs> they didn't enter the uh, true religion and also in addition that they couldn't imagine the punishment will be uh, like that all these things will be apparent to them during the day of judgment when they see the hellfire so at that time they will mention or they will confess or admit their sins can Is I just it? ask you a question about the about the tafsir and in, in the app from Iman Ahmed said that he heard from one of the companions that the messenger of Allah said the people will not be destroyed until they themselves confess their guilt. So if yeah. people don't confess their guilt, they won't be destroyed. So they could just all people will confess their guilt. They will all all the disbelievers will confess. Lie on that day. Yeah, yeah, because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is al adl, all just. He will not punish any uh, person except he deserves this punishment. And if you follow the ayat of punishment for the disbelievers in the Quran, you will see that every ayah, even before or after, Allah is giving you the justification why they deserve this punishment. And mm -hmm. after that, they will admit that they deserve to be punished. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, the last ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you, uh, as uh, he mentioned about the punishment. Before before just uh, going to the last ayah, I want to, I told you that the hellfire is very angry, very angry, and um, Allah is telling us about the hellfire. It has a sound and it has a feeling like the rage and anger because of those disbelievers. Yeah, and she's angry because of those disbelievers they didn't obey Allah. They didn't, um, although many, many evidence they uh, saw in their life, but they died while they still disbelievers. And this is the cause uh, of angry. 
why uh, of anger, why the hellfire uh, is angry with those disbelievers. In Ayah 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to the uh, uh, to, uh, to, talking to us about the believers in الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ Here the people who fear their Lord by unseen. What is the meaning of fearing their Lord unseen? Us. Fear their Lord unseen. Basically, we believe in them and they haven't got them, you know, it's, it's like the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said something about um, the ones who take the message and haven't seen me. Is it related to that? Those people Very, Allah who, informs that who fear standing before his Lord, being frightened about matters between himself and Allah when he's not Allah. in the presence mm -hmm. of other people. So he refrains from disobedience and he performs acts of obedience when no one sees him except Allah. Allah. Yeah, so basically is, you don't you don't do things to show off when you're just you with Allah and you do yeah, things. Yeah. It, yeah. When you it's are like alone. When, when you when are we alone, what you are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Is secret. Very important. Because actually this is will differentiate the uh, people who are pretending to be righteous and wise in front of others and between themselves something else. So here in the tafsir is telling you that when you are alone with Allah, what you are doing? Are you increase your prayer, more focusing and more focusing on reading Quran, memorizing Quran, or you would like to do that in front of people more? Would you like to make your prayers in the masjid more to, to let all sisters sing you praying and increase in your sujood, increase in your rukuah? You can judge yourself. So the people who are, as mentioned here, fearing only from Allah, so frightened about matters between themselves and Allah. The things that may happen from them and nobody saw them except Allah. So they are trying to be away from disobedience. In the hadith, the Prophet والسلام, when uh, Jibreel came to him as the, in the shape of man and asked him about the Islam pillars and the pillars of Iman and then lastly he asked him about the Ihsan and Ihsan usually the word I don't like to, tra to translate it to English because it's, there is no accurate translation for the word Ihsan except what the Prophet ﷺ defined that Ihsan to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as if you see him because if you don't see Allah in this dunya or in this life Allah sees you so you have to make your life on this direction every action you are doing just remember that Allah is seeing you so by doing that so you will be from those people that fear Allah by unseen okay what are the rewards for so for those people lahum maghfiratun all the forgiveness lahum maghfiratun all the forgiveness for them وَأَجْرٌ kabir and great reward. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't mention what type of reward. Just he mentioned great reward. أَجْرٌ kabir. But what this type of reward is <coughs> What does it mean when Allah didn't mention what type of reward here? What does it mean? Heaven. It can you be anything. Get, you will get heaven. We, we will get, uh, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from them, unimaginable. Something yeah, you cannot true. imagine from the uh, uh, rewards by Allah give you. Unlimited, unimaginable, beyond your mind level. You can do whatever you can say, whatever you can say in this simple two words. Ajurum kabir, great reward. What's this type of reward? How much? Um, how long it will stay, all this is meaning that it is unlimited and uh, priceless, something that you cannot imagine, all this will be for the people who uh, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unseen. 
اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك